here with Kevin Rose, founder of Dig. Hey, Kevin. Hey. Thanks for coming. Uh, actually, thanks for inviting me to your office. Yeah, thanks for coming to the office. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to get a sort of a state of the union of Dig because the, the company's been around now for four, four plus, years. plus years, November 2004. So um, obviously it's grown a lot, changed a lot, and it's clear that you're, there's a big focus on new products and some things that you're doing. Absolutely. I want to talk about the last couple of years, what happened to the company, the good and the bad, and sure. how that's affected your, your thoughts on product and things like that. Sure. So can we take a step back, and I think the history of Dig is well known. When you launched in November 2004, right. it's a way for people to add bookmarks that they found interesting. Other people dig those bookmarks, and then you know, the, the best stuff goes to the top. Right. I think that's sort of well known. Uh, when, did the, when did the idea explode and you realized definitely it's sort of taken hold it's gone viral and people love this. Network effect kicked in middle of 05? Yeah, middle of 05. That's when you launched Dig 2? Yeah, uh, Dig, Dig 2 is, was kind of the catalyst, I think, for a lot of that stuff. Yeah. I think that w Dig 1 was just my own design and it was still a very, um, oh, it was still a very uh, kind of crappy digging process. We weren't using Ajax yet for, for the digging, so you would actually dig a story, it would take you to another page that said, thanks for your dig then you have to go back to the last page you were at. So, um, you know, Ajax wasn't big back then. I remember when we were calling it a asynchronous JavaScript and everyone was like, when the word Ajax came out, we were all like, ooh, that's different, you know? <laughs> it was like, and then all of a sudden everyone was using uh, that to, to speed things up and make things easier. So um, we launched that, the new design, the new big yellow buttons kind of bring the voting uh, aspect of the site front and center. You know, that was what, June? Five, Something like early. that, okay. right? That was just before Jay came on because Jay joined the team. I think a month or two after launching 2.0. Yeah. Because I was showing uh, Jason uh, Calacanis was interested in buying Dig uh, even at 1.0, and that's when did he make um, an offer or he was sort of floating around a million dollars? Yeah, or? I mean he he made an email offer. There were never any like lawyers involved or anything like that. He on behalf of AOL, right? No. No, this he, oh, he hadn't sold to AOL yet. Yeah. Right, yeah. so he's working with, with Cuban and, yeah. and Weblogs. And we met for sushi in, in Los Angeles, and he really liked the concept. Um, I showed him version 2 before we launched, and he looked, took, a, took a look at the new designs and was like, done. And then a day later, I got an email from him stating that you know he'd like to kind of fold it into to the mix of sites that he was already working on and thought it was really cool. Um, and was it the price that was a problem or just him? No, I, I like Jason. I think it was the, the terms were really funky. I mean, they were, they were, he's a smart, shrewd businessman. You know, he was like, here's a kid that doesn't know anything, which at that time I'd never dealt with the VC community, with the investors of any shape or form. And uh, he basically threw out some pretty aggressive terms. Um, I, I was kind of blown away. I was like, wow, I could actually, you know, take a mil make a million dollars here in something that I'd spent, you know, four months building. Yeah. Um, Shared that stuff with Jay uh, at the time, who was just kind of an advisor, you know, and he he looked at it and said, "These are crap terms. Don't do it. Um, you know, this is something really serious about. Let's turn it into a real business." Um, well, I mean, it already was a business. I I created a corporation for Dig um, before we launched, um, but I I was one of those two hundred fifty dollar kits that you go and do yeah. online and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, that, that, version two was when it really started to take off. It, but you didn't actually raise any capital until in October of 05, right? Or at least that's when it was announced? Well, we, I had a, I, I was basically funding the entire project out of my own bank account. Mm -hmm. I had run out of cash. Um, we needed some more servers. And by more, I mean like server number three or something like that. You know, I just, I really was in a sad state of affairs as far as my savings, so it was only a few thousand dollars and that was that money. Yeah. And uh, at that point in time, um, I talked to a friend of mine, Chris, um, who started a company called Text America. Um, probably don't remember them, but they were a really big kind of photo, um, you could take a photo with your cell phone, email it, it would post it online, kind of a photo blog type service. Um, he threw in 50K, so he was our first angel. And then as that was happening, they gave us a, a little bit of breathing room, at least another month of, of breathing room to where we could actually sit down with some real angels. Um, we were in the process of moving back up to the Bay Area. And that's what we, when we sat down with the angels and uh, and VCs at the same time to try and figure out who we wanted to work with. And you worked with a bunch of them: Greylock, Lamidiar, Mark Andreessen, Reid Hoffman, Ron Conway, 
Mike Maples somehow squeezed in there. Mike I think Maples he had just started investing, awesome. right? Well, he came. He was actually introduced to us by uh, he was working with Conway at the time, okay. kind of vetting deals. And Conway is, you know, of course, amazing. And and Maples has turned out to be just an awesome. I mean, you know, Maples. He's just an awesome guy. Yeah. I, I'd be honored to have him involved in anything I ever do in the future. So. So what was the valuation of that round? That round? Yeah, two point eight million you raised. I guess. Yeah, raised two point eight. I don't know. Maybe I think, the company, I think we had like a post of like maybe eight. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, and that was in 05, so it was before <clears throat> things started exploding. Right. So delicious hadn't been bought yet. We we had good graph. We had. I mean, everyone was looking at Alexa at that time, right? And yeah. the graphs were up and to the right, and that was something that VCs were very into. Um, I think one of the problems, though, I wouldn't have gone and shopped as many venture capitalists as we did. I mean, we went all up and down Sand Hill Road, and we had term sheets from just a whole slew of different companies. Uh, took up a lot of time. You know, this is time when servers were falling over, things yeah. were crashing. We, we should have just met with a, a, you know, two or three and just gone from there. And Jay was on board at that point as CEO. Right. So uh, the second I actually needed some real cash, um, I had no idea what I was doing. Jay had done it before. So Jay, um, you know, you come on, run the business side of the house, and I'm fine with giving you the CEO role, because at the time that, that's what I was doing, as long as I have final say on whatever product we, we decided. Has that caused any stress in the relationship with you having final say on product? Um, no, not really. I mean, we, we battle, we have a ha a healthy battles back and forth about certain things, but um, at the end, end of the day, it, it, it all works out. So 06, we're only up to 06 now, but I think we'll go a little faster. 06 was when all the acquisition rumors started. I remember, um, I forgot which blog, a small blog said, it's guaranteed, I know Yahoo bought Dig. Was it 20 million is what the, the rumor was? 20, 25, something like that, yeah. yeah. W was there any truth, to, I mean, were there discussions going on or was that just completely fabricated? I mean, I mean, already you were getting interested. We were talking about, uh, that was at the point where all of a sudden, um, Dig had enough kind of media attention to where a lot of companies started knocking on the door. And a lot of the times it was, we don't understand who you are or what you do, but we hear that you're the future of news. We want to talk to you. Yeah. Especially, you know, the second, you know how this works, like the second one rumor appears, then you get calls from five other companies saying, is this true, is this true? If so, let's yeah. talk, let's talk, you know? So, um, Yahoo had, had, had purchased Delicious, and you know, I'm friends with uh, Joshua, Joshua yeah. Schachter, and, and, um, and he had called me up and said, you know, are you talking to some people here at Yahoo? If not, you should be. You know, like he had been talking to some folks there and made some introductions, and there was some conversation going back and forth, but it never got really crazy serious. We never came to a term sheet or anything like that. Um, but that's that's, you know, those were the days of, of you were distraction. Too. It was it was a major distraction for us. And looking back on things, I probably would have just push that all aside and stay focused on the product. Because, you know, I, I'm getting phone calls from Rupert Murdoch. I fly down to LA, sit down, have lunch with him. He invites us out for drinks. He wants to know how this might work out, you know. Fly out, meet with Barry Diller. I mean, this is like, it's, it's an honor and a crazy exciting time. You know, I'm sitting here thinking like, wow, I could never, ever hope to have an audience with these guys. Yeah. It, and now I'm sitting here, you know, um, hanging out with them, and it was nuts. So that, there was like a three-year period through 08 where, um, I mean, there were barely a month would go by without a huge rumor that you guys were right. getting bought. And you're, you had massive growth, lots of attention. Everything was going great, although you had some side projects, which, which you still do, but, you know, obviously very focused on Dig, and it's sort of well-documented that offers were made, and... Never, two parties never really came together. You raised another round of funding in the middle of that at the end of 06, another eight and a half million, is that right? Something mm -hmm. like yeah, that? Yeah, sounds about right. Um, and that's sort of all water under the bridge at that point. Um, but last year, it seems like things sort of peaked with, early in the year, it seemed like there was interest from maybe Microsoft and Google, maybe some others. Google seemed to be pretty interested, at least from my sources and came pretty close to buying you guys. And I, I suspect that you're not going to talk too much about this since it's recent history still. But um, there seemed to be, you know, an almost acquisition in the middle of the year, didn't happen, and you guys made, it seems to me, a conscious decision to regroup and sort of really focus on the core business in the long haul. Is that correct or? I mean, I think that there were some pretty intense conversations. Um, 
with, with a, a couple parties and when uh, at the end of the day I don't think that we've achieved our kind of grand vision of, of having you know I always talk to the staff about a world where you know dig will have uh, you know 20 30 50 thousand votes on stories and articles and really kind of uh, democratizing media and I, I just feel as though we have a long way to go and and so the, the question is um, oftentimes when these these deals come to the table is it going to be a situation where of course you know is. two plus two equals ten yeah. well not necessarily well oh no I'm sorry I thought you were going to say is a situation where they buy us and then we go in the deep freeze right you know, which is what right. happens to most exactly yeah which which really bothers me because you see this happen time and time again, right? You see these little great ideas in startups yeah. and all of a sudden it turns into more process and overhead and it's not a, a win. It's just really kind of, oh, well, that was fun and it just goes to kind of fizzle out and that's, yeah. that's the end of your baby. So, Well, normally I call bullshit on that. I just say, yeah, well, that's great, but $100 million in your pocket might get you over those concerns for your baby. But one thing I had heard is that in the last round, so you did another round late last year, you raised, it was a big round, 29 million, 28.7 million, something like that. You and Jay, maybe some others, took a little bit of money off the table. What I heard is that you actually could have taken a lot of money off the table and you elected to take very, very little. And there were actually, there was more money that wanted to come in than, uh, than you guys took. And you know, what was the thinking behind that? I mean, you could have taken $10 million off the table at that point if you really wanted to, probably, right? I think that it's a pretty common thing uh, in the Valley with, with all founders of, of companies that get to a certain size to have uh, in later rounds um, uh, venture capitalists approach you and say, um, we understand you can sell. Um, we know that you could you know, take this offer at $20 million or $50 yeah. million or whatever it may be. But we believe you know, five years from now you're a $5 billion company and, and we'd like to see that upside. So as part of this next round, we'll, we'll buy some of your stock. Yeah, but you and, didn't want to sell that much, is that right? Well, I don't want to talk about what I have or have not sold. All your investors are willing to talk about it. So. <laughs> I mean, the rumor I've heard is you took a million dollars off the table. So, I mean, I, I don't want to get into your personal finances, right. but it seems to me that it's pretty clear you could have taken a lot more than you did, whatever that number is. And is that because, is there some reason, you know, because you, you really want to see this through and you really well, think this I, is a I think that billion dollar business someday? I mean, th there's, and, and I'm just speaking in, in general terms here, but in, in speaking with a lot of my friends that are in similar situations that are founders of other companies. Like who? I don't, I'm not going to name names. <laughs> You're very good at this. Um, but one of the things that... Uh, we t here, we'll turn the camera off for a second. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've, I've seen you do that before and the camera's still rolling. <laughs> Um, one of the things that uh, is, is pretty common is that one of the things that you want to weigh when you're trying to figure this out is like, okay, if this were to blow up tomorrow, you know, I, I don't want to make sure that, that this is a, a waste of my time. And at the same time, you want to have enough equity still left in the company that you can see that upside down the road. And um, so I think that if you believe in your company, you're not going to sell all of your shares, right? You're going to want to hold on to that and, and continue to, to charge ahead. So um, I am still the you know single largest shareholder at Dig, and uh, I believe in what we're trying to build, and I know our product roadmap is, is as solid as it's ever been, and uh, I'm uh, I'm excited to keep plugging along. So let's let's talk uh, shift topics a little bit and talk about plugging along. Um, you guys have always been pretty innovative on the product side. Um, well, keeping the core sort of idea, obviously you're not going to mess with that, where people vote for stories and then people see the stories. Um, you've done a lot of things um, over over the years to combat, uh, I don't know, not spam, but you know, sort of fake voting. Because there's so much traffic at stake and, and creating algorithms to try to filter that out and group people together who are voting as blocks. Um, you're just making some of this shit up now. No, I mean, we, you've talked about how that's an ongoing battle. Right, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what I want to understand, and I, I don't think that's actually that interesting. I, I agree, it's probably an ongoing battle, which you'll either win or lose. But what's more inter interesting to me are some of the things you've done more recently, and I'd like to understand what your plans are for the future broadly, um, around the Dig Bar, which you just recently launched, and um, around the new search, uh, which really seemed to be like two years too late, and, but you know, you, you 
finally got around to fixing search and it's excellent. Um, so you're, you're starting to do some really interesting things with parts of the product. Can you talk a little bit about search and dig bar and then you know what you think is going to happen in the future to the extent you're willing to talk about it? Sure. Which one do you want to cover first? Dig bar? Let's go backwards. So let's talk about dig bar first. Sure. Then, yeah. So uh, the idea behind dig bar, um, we have these things internally uh, called dig ideas uh, meetings where any employee can come and pitch an idea. Uh, to the company, and they, they often type, uh, oftentimes prototype up different ideas um, using our staging servers um, so that we can play around with real data and see what stuff looks like before we actually push it live. Um, the dig bar came up um, actually a few years ago. It was something that we had, we had about two and a half years ago. We had an actual mock-up of it. We didn't actually have it working until another employee that picked up uh, or someone had left off. But the idea is that uh, we've known for a long time it's a really clunky process for someone to go click out, read an article, come back, dig, and and with our omniture and things that we use to track um, behavior on the site, uh, it's oftentimes they'll click out, really enjoy something, click on, forget to dig the story, or click out, have to come back, and it's this back and forth. So the idea was, can we create a tool that adds value to um, to the user when they go and visit this third-party site. Um, will they find value and be able to dig the story directly on the site if there's not a dig button already yeah. there? Will they find value in looking at related stories um, and more stories from that source? Um, is there value in showing the number of times the page has been viewed, not just the digs, but the overall global views? And also, is it, we want to make it extremely easy for you to be able to share that person's, that publisher story uh, on, into other social graphs. So one click out to Facebook, one click out to Twitter, all integrated into a single bar that also happens to do short URLs at the same time. Which is great for Twitter. Yeah, right, yeah. which is great for Twitter. So it's, it's like, it was this big, massive collection of a bunch of different ideas all coming together. Um, and it was something I'm, I'm really excited about because I think from a registered use, user's uh, perspective, the data is clear. Our digs, 43% of digs now occur on the dig bar itself. That's huge. That's huge for us. Um, people are clicking on... Which really means people really do want to check out the story before they hit that dig button. Right, absolutely. Before they either dug it really without reading it, just based mm -hmm. on the title and summary, or they clicked out and then came back. Right. Yeah. Are you seeing... So you're, you're probably seeing a... Well, we're seeing digs up as well. So what, yeah. what once was, yeah. click out, I read it, oh, I'm, I've moved on to something else. Yeah. It's click out, I read it, oh, I really enjoy it, and I dig it. Yeah. Which is great for helping surface other stories to the front page. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also great on when users interact and view other similar stories or more from that source to drive people deeper yeah. within that own site. But, um, you know, we figured let's go out the gate and turn it on for everyone and see if there's a value across the board. See if anonymous users think that the features such as views, related stories, related by source, and comments like top, most controversial, and recent are enough where they would look at that and say, okay, I'm not a digger. I don't have an account. I can't participate and click dig. But these other value adds are you know, something I enjoy. Um, that feedback from the anonymous crowd um, was mixed, and even some of the registered, registered users as well. Um, the vocal registered users, I should say, uh, can oftentimes swing one way versus when you take a look at the whole entire picture and how many people are actually digging in the, yeah. you know, five million users that we have registered on the account, or uh, on, on dig. Um, you have five million registered users on dig? 4.8, something like that, 4.9, something like that. I, I don't but like 35 million uniques, right? Right, 35 million uniques a month. So, long story short, um, we sat back and just collected the data. We were, we were taking a look at what people were doing at the bar. Were they closing it out? Were they closing it out and blocking it? Um, and we looked at all the different segments. So, you know, someone that comes in from a search engine that's kind of a search or wanderer when they click out, what do they do with the bar versus someone that comes in from the big homepage, clicks out, that's not registered versus someone that has a registered account. And kind of looked at the data and then also um, took in the feedback from the SEO community talking about how, um, you know, if a search engine comes in as an anonymous user effectively and they try and crawl one of these short URLs, dig short yeah. URLs, I'll post it on another site. Um, will that impact their Google juice? Yeah. So there was a bunch of different cards on the table. And it was kind of one of these things where we said, okay, we're not going to knee-jerk reaction here and day two 
be like, hey, we were making changes. So we sat back, collect a week plus worth of data, including uh, a ton of our survey feedback forms that we had right into the bar. So people would click out and, and fill out a survey on what they thought uh, of the bar. And at the end of the day, it just made sense to simplify things and keep it a registered only user experience. Um, and so essentially, if anyone, search engine, user, a non-user of Dig, receives one of these short Dig URLs through Twitter or wherever else in the universe, and they click on it, and they're not logged in, it's just going to do a straight up 301 redirect to the destination yeah. site. And you, so you announced uh, a couple of days ago mm -hmm. those changes. What about um, just the effect of the Dig bar on Dig? Are you seeing a huge increase in unique visitors from people using it on Twitter that, you yeah. know, and uh, I mean, like, how many? I mean, not What's huge, but data? it's, it's I, I, I'd have to get you numbers from our stats department. Are you but guessing it's a... It's a, it's a Material 10, 20% increase? I, I, do you know what the numbers on that are? I, I don't either. I, I, I mean, I know, I don't think it, it's not 20% increase yeah. in uniques. Yeah. I'm thinking it's around the 5 to 10% range, somewhere around there. Um, but that's. Which is great. Which is great because it's, it's, it's taking, um, it, it's, it's allowing us to bring in more users for, to vote on our stories and just be on the site. What about. What about search? And and let's start to think, like in terms of, you said a few minutes ago that your grand vision is uh, you'd have a stories with up to 50,000 digs on it. And now, what's some of the bigger stories have 5,000 digs, right? What's uh, the most I mean, like, time? in any given week, like, I, like, there was a story a couple days ago that had like 13,000. So okay. our big stories are the thirteen to 15,000 digs. Mm -hmm. If it's insane, like some... A president gets elected. <laughs> That's yeah. what we're talking, like you know, the twenty, thirty thousand world. But um, you want to see it where all the top stories are in the tens of thousands of digs. And how do you get there? How do you bridge from here to there? And how long is that road? That road is a lot shorter than you would think. Okay. I, I, I mean, I'm not going to go into into details about sure product details, but I will say so. We've been talking about, you know, I think that we kind of just gave a really good overview of. of the four years and leading up into this point. And I think that there was only one time in Dig's history where we really, well, two times, I think, that we really kind of did more than just add-ons. Like, Dig has always been, launched. we launched the site, and then adding feature, 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 revision, feature, revision, right? Um, the big kind of product changes for us were 2.0, which went from that nasty, ugly design, no Ajax, to a more interactive experience expanding into all categories, so getting out of just the tech. And what we're working on now is what I would consider to be the biggest overhaul to how everything works behind the scenes. And that's no joke. Like we, we Front have- Front end and back end rewrite type stuff. Completely new directions for us that you will look at and I can guarantee you be like, that's a ballsy move. Like it's, it's really, we're evolving, and we've we've got we've got some really exciting things that we believe are going to take us. What's to your timing on that? Is that this year? Or is that's it? A, that's. Well, I'm not the that. <laughs> that's that's. I mean, I I'm not going to give out hard dates, but it's it's sometime in in the next six months. And what might that look like? Like, what are we talking about? Well, um, we're talking about yeah, we're talking about a. Uh, a, a revamp of the site. Yeah, like a logo change? Yeah, a logo change is going to get us there. We're talking about some what lens, are you do that some lens like, flares hey, on the logo. Here's some stories and there's a like, dig it. I mean, like that's kind of it, right? It's like a one-trick pony with, you know, oh. bells and whistles attached. I mean, I agree that most of your changes are bells and whistles. So what what is it that you're going to do that doesn't kill your core idea that's a whole new thing? I, I, can't, I can't go into that stuff right now. Can we see a screenshot? Sure. You have to <laughs> Are you, uh, do you need raising more money this year? No. We, 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 uh, we've put a, a lot of, of time and effort in, in focusing on revenue in the last six months, as, as we should. Um, we essentially have started to build out our ad sales team. Um, we've got another year and a half um, Microsoft. with Microsoft, and our ad sales team now is starting to focus on more custom integrations with uh, uh, bigger ad campaigns. Um, so it's exciting. How, you know, is Microsoft, how much, how much revenue is Microsoft? It's like $100 million over the three years of the contract? We don't, like we don't disclose that stuff. 
I'm pretty sure one night you told me that. We were having beers. I'm pretty sure you said $100 million. Really? Maybe a little more. It's a three-year deal. It's up next year. <laughs> and now you're going, you know, direct sales is the future. But the new product stuff isn't around revenue, right? No, it is. Oh, there's, it is. there's a piece of that as well. Absolutely. There's a yeah. big component around revenue, which is nice because for the, for the first time, I feel as though it's always kind of been this awkward bolt-on to doing. It's always like, oh, we have display ads. Oh, yeah. we can do a custom thing with Dig Dialog or something like that, right? It's you can oh remember oh it's the new ad product that we talked about. Remember you told me this last year. Ad? But you never told me this, but I was thinking about it last year, which is uh, you have ads that basically people vote on. And the better the is, ad, the cheaper it is and the higher it is, right? Is is an ad product really gonna get us to the world of, you know, thirty, fifty thousand digs? No. No. But I love that pro I do like that product idea. You know what I'm saying, right? This is where it's right in the story and it's you know, people vote on it based on how good the ad is. I think there's something there. I don't know what, quite what it is, but the idea is like, you know, the higher it is and maybe even the cheaper it is, the more people vote on it. And then, you know, it really encourages really good ads, whatever those ads are. I think that's interesting. So, um, you always wonder why, you asked me one time why, uh, you, you know, what was the question, the offhanded comment that you made about what is your staff work on because we have so many developers? You had 70 engineers, or like 50 engineers out of 70 employees at one point, right? I don't think and it's 50 like, engineers. It's probably... Well, you're probably about 40 or so. Yeah, and it, like it's dig. Like, what do you need? Like one guy? And then, <laughs> you know? Well, I mean. Some ops guys to keep How many ops guys do you have? Oh, we have like one tech guy. How many servers? Oh, three, I think. Well, yeah. that's the problem. Yeah. Not to say your site's not huge, because I know you do a good job with caching. I think you work with Chris, right? Yeah, we, uh, Media Temple does yeah. all of our hosting. Chris is yeah. amazing. He's absolutely amazing. He can tweak yeah. anything to run off like yeah. a couple servers. Yeah, but what the hell did you need with, you know, 50 engineers when. Hundreds and hundreds of servers, my friend, and new projects, R and D, staging to environments. It just it requires. Well, that was my argument that you guys weren't stupid. It, it wasn't that they were doing nothing. It was that you were working on some big new things because. But then you laid big, them all big off. Big new things but are then coming. Then you laid them off, right? And no, so. no, absolutely not. We um, we still have a, a team of forty or so engineers. Okay, total employees fifty. So 72, 72? Oh, I thought it was 70 before the layoff, so, okay, so. It's a little higher. Okay. Um, well, I, again, I, I, I don't want you to talk about, and you're not going to talk about the new product, and actually, well, I, I will know. say this. Yeah. I, I, I will say this. Uh, I don't want to get into specific details about the product, but I believe that it's time for Dig to get a little bit more real-time in nature, and we need to be a living and breathing site, um, and you know, it's, uh, that's a, an exciting direction for us. I think that that's part of the reason why we, we rolled out a pretty awesome search, you know, is kind of us experimenting um, with some of that. So it's... Uh, okay, well, that's a, that's a teaser. That's great. It, one thing that concerns me is that um, you know, massive more participation on the site probably means, which is a good thing, but it probably means on the downside uh, more... Trolling. Any community, the bigger it gets, and dig long ago hit that point where you get a lot of negativity from users. And you guys have done as well as anyone in fighting that and keeping the community as positive as possible and as interesting as possible. But how, how do you fight that in the future? If you get orders of magnitude bigger, how do, what do you do? Well, I that? think that it's, it's clear that not, you can't throw you know, 35 million people in the same sandbox and expect them to always get along. Like There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, it's, it's, it, it, it has to do with fostering positive communication among friends and peers, uh, and then also the way that you slice the data and giving people uh, you know, a place to, to hang out and call home that might not necessarily be just the, the dig front page. Um, just a couple more questions if, if I can. Sure. Um, so you guys have had obviously a lot of competitors over time. Yeah. Um, yeah. You had Reddit, which eventually Condé Nast bought. It's now part of Wired, I guess. Um, Mix is out there. There's Hacker News, which is a great site run by Paul Graham. Um, you've seen that, I'm sure, right? It's like sort of a niche site just for yeah, tech news. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's, there's Netscape, which became Propeller, uh, which is really seems to be on its last legs. I think TechCrunch is actually quite a bit bigger than Propeller. Um, and obviously we're blocked. So Are you them or no? No, I don't see that happening, no. Just but kidding. it's, um, I mean, it's very, very small. And, oh, and there's also Yahoo Buzz. So, I mean, Yahoo, big guys, Yahoo and AOL gunned for you. Uh, and then there's this, sort of the small sites, I think, you know, Mix in particular considers itself to be a competitor. Um, 
do those guys really have a chance to, you know, do you feel like you're so big now that they do, yeah? I don't feel that we're so big now. I just feel that we're heading in a different direction than them. Well, see, that gets back to the, you got to remember the, the, you know, the golden, what's the golden goose or the golden, what's that saying? Like, you have this thing that kind of works. Yeah, the golden, golden egg. You've got, the golden egg, golden egg. Yeah, the, yeah. I don't, I, Maybe we could edit that to make it sound a little more intelligent, but <laughs> the, the you have the golden egg, you have the goose, and you've got a you know you can't you can't screw that up, right? So how do you? I guess what I need is more details on, on what your you know the new real time stuff. Yeah, well I'm I'm happy to when the time comes where I can sit down with you, and I don't think you do embargoes anymore, so I don't know if that's going to happen. You, you still still on that train or no? I do embargoes with PR groups that I respect and that have not have not screwed up in the past. So and your your PR. Uh, your communications people are pretty excellent. So. Your New Year's resolutions included uh, you wanted to go on a date with Jennifer Aniston, and I, I assume that you were at least partially serious. Is that like how partially that serious? Well, I don't know if it was completely a joke or if you really meant it, or I mean, do you have a plan for that, or you know, has it happened? I, I was, it was more joking than anything else. But then again, if she wants to go on a date, does she have a publicist or an agent that reached out to you? I mean, it seems I like have not even of, yeah. said anything about this. Oh yeah, that's right. She hates people at Twitter, so I'm kind of out. She has strong feelings about Twitter. Yeah, she broke up with uh, John Mayer because he was tweeting too much. Oh, so I gotta read more blogs. That's not more celebrity yeah. stuff. So yeah, it's game over. Um, okay, well, thanks very much for your time. I really look forward to uh, to the new stuff, and um, good luck with it all. Thanks.